the casino stocks continue their remarkable rebound, just look at MGM Resorts, one of the world's largest gaming and hospitality companies that you might recognize as the owner of the Palazzo, MGM Grand, Mandalay Bay, and the Mirage in Las Vegas. Not to mention one casino, Macau, the Chinese gambling haven with the second in development. MGM has had a rough time over the past year. Macau got hurt. But ever since the market-wide bottom in early February, the stock has come back with a vengeance, rallying 36% from its lows. Some of that's because the company successfully monetized its real estate assets by spending off the land under 10 of its casinos as a real estate investment trust. MGM growth properties back on April 20th. Uh, 20th. we got to talk about that. Some of it's because the company reported a solid quarter two weeks ago, which suggested that 2016 might turn out to be a nice growth year for MGM. Can it keep climbing? Let's check in with Jim Murin, who is an old friend. I have to say it. The chairman and CEO of MGM Resorts International learned more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Muram, welcome to Man Money. Hey. Good to see you, Jim. How are you? Thank you, Jim. But, Thank you. You know, I always say the show's uh, not about friends, about money, but you helped me make a lot of money as an analyst <laughs> when I ran my hedge fund, so thank you. My pleasure. And you made people a lot of money in a, something that no one's done this year, in an IPO. Weird, how did you huh? do it? Well, we crafted the IPO with the investor in mind because we knew the market was rugged. IPO market's been lousy. So we created something that was irresistible. We wanted to raise about a billion dollars. We had 11 billion of demand and brought that uh, puppy public and it's up since. And it looks like from some of the analyst reports that this could be, uh, if you don't want the ups and downs of gambling uh, or gaming and, and hospitality, this could be a very steady income stream over time. Well, this one's for my mom. Because okay. uh, well she's been after me for years. Why don't I pay a dividend? So MGM Growth Properties got a six plus percent yield. I think the dividend could. It's set up so that the dividend could just about double over the next five years, and uh, with great asset quality and great corporate coverage. So it's a different way to play MGM. It's uh, a yield producing way. And it's a, a large REIT, so it could be very quickly involved in the index, which might also help it again. Well, you know, the largest uh, triple net lease REIT. Uh, is O, um, right. and, uh, they, and that's been, that's been skyrocketing, ship. A right? rocket ship. That has about a billion dollars of cash flow right. right now. We started this, we birthed this REIT with 550 million of cash flow. I think it, our REIT's going to be bigger than them. I think ours wow. is going to be the biggest five years from now. Well, that's huge. And now you've got some things going on. Now, everyone knows the Vegas properties. What I learned when I was going through the all the work for you to see you is, MGM National Harbor? Yeah. Why is this going to, you seem to be the most excited about this <laughs> of all the things in your presentations? Well, first, you spend a lot of time in D.C. Have they ever yeah. had a bad day? No. Uh, no. So, and, and it's like this every yeah. year in terms of their income. <laughs> exactly. So we're building 12 miles from the Capitol on the banks of the Potomac, three airports between BWI, Dulles, and National, a billion three property. This is going to open at the end of the year, and it's going to gush cash. We're going to probably make $200 million a year in that property. And uh, win or lose, whoever wins, uh, they'll be celebrating in National Harbor or commiserating because right. uh, it opens in December. Now, but Springfield? Yeah. Why? You know, uh, gritty market, yeah. uh, down and out, uh, needs a break. Uh, I think it's like Detroit for us. We went into okay. Detroit, invested $900 million. Uh, through thick and thin, we make about $150 million a year during the auto bailout, during the recession still, because we've built a quality property, right. and uh, it's, it's a must-see in Detroit. That's what I look at at uh, Springfield. We spent about $900 million, employ 3,000 people that desperately need the jobs, 4,000, by the way, in Maryland, so we're creating we're one of those job creators right now. So I, I don't say uh, Springfield's going to be a home run. I'd say it's a nice, solid double uh, or triple. Uh, the National Harbor one is the Grand Slam home run. All right, now let's talk China because yeah. the reports are so dire. Tim Cook's over there looked like it was pretty good. They're still investing. Yeah. Uh, we tend to think of China as over. You clearly can't think it's over. It's not over. It's not over. It's, it's going through a very painful transition from an industrial economy to a consumption economy, a consumer economy. That's going to take, frankly, a decade or more. Um, but in Macau, the single only place where you can gamble um, with over a billion people that have their eyes set on this tiny little area. Uh, we're one of only six companies that can operate in Macau. Uh, it's been a rugged time over the last couple of years, but I'm, I'm calling the bottom. I think okay. that uh, the GGR... You are the, calling the bottom. Calling the That's bottom. That's important because I know where you come from. Yeah, and I'm the smallest guy over there. Okay. So it's, it's more important to Sands and to win than it is to us. 
but uh, the market clearly is showing signs of growth on the mass, which is kind of like right. folks like you and me, not the big high rollers. Okay. I think next year it'll be up versus this year, and uh, we don't make a ton of money there, but I think we're going to make more. All right. Now, the other companies you mentioned, they got some larger left guys. Steve Wynn, <laughs> on his conference call, starts taking off against people, taking off with politicians, yeah. says what he wants, right? Uh, Sheldon Adelson, I mean, to me, he's the most important person now in the Republican Party when I pick up the paper. You are a former Wall Street analyst who have had tremendous success. Tell me about your journey, because it's one that a lot of people from Wall Street don't take. And yet I would think more should. Well, I loved being an analyst, Jim. When I talked to you when I was an analyst, I, I thought I had the best job on the oh, planet. I so loved it. I loved it. I've been out there 18 years. I started as a CFO, moved up to the chairman and CEO. But I, I love the investment process. I love the deal making. I love capital restructuring. We're a capital intensive business. And I love the creative aspect. So for me, I got lucky uh, getting into this job. I love it. And the fact that I have 63,000 employees, and look, I, I'm, I'm not a founder of this company. No. Kirk Corrin right. was the founder, legendary man. I'm an employee. I'm an employee that works to try to make 63,000 lives at the company better, through better employment, through better health care, through better work environment. And people like working for MGM. And so when I look at those celebrities, and uh, they certainly are bigger than life, I'm just a guy working at a company that... I'm, I'm honored to work for. And last question, Vegas is really doing well. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. You know, it's supply and demand, Jim. Yeah. So uh, demand's growing rapidly. Uh, Vegas is back, and no one's building new stuff. And by the way, you can't because these big guys that we own, they cost a million dollars a room. You cannot build a property <laughs> today <laughs> for more than for less than four or five or six billion dollars. So, so no one's coming in. And if the market keeps growing, it's good for the home team, and MGM's the home team. Wow. Well, it's a great, both are great stories. One for your mom and one <laughs> for everybody else. That's Jim Muren. He's the chairman and CEO of MGM Resorts International, who just had maybe, maybe the best IPO in the last couple of years. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.